Hi everyone, this is Editor Neba coming to you from the future. Just a quick heads up before we get started with today's episode, just letting you know that my audio stream for about the first half an hour is a bit too loud. I'm aware of it and I really do apologize about it. It does fix itself out about half an hour into our stream. So uh, if you could put up with it until that point, uh, you should be fine. But uh, hopefully it shouldn't uh, cause too much of an issue. Just wanted to give you a heads up before we get into this very special episode. Anyway, thank you. On to Ralph and Damien to intro this episode. Hi everyone, Ralph here from Board Game Gateway. With me is Damien. Hello. Hi. We have a very special episode for you all today. Today we have interviewed someone. I can't believe we actually got got this going. I know, Damien, it was really cool. Who did we interview? We interviewed the creator of Ticket to Ride. It was amazing. <laughs> the creator of Ticket to Ride. This isn't Ticket to Ride. No, no, no. Oh no, that's the other podcast one. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We interviewed Stephen Medway, the creator of Blood on the Clock Tower. That's right. Blood on the Clock Tower, one of my favorite games of all time. It's a massive social deduction game. Yes, it is quite literally. Uh, I would say revolutionize the way we play games, certainly at our way. And um, it, our, our, we have this massive community now from it, and. We were absolutely buzzed, not not only to have Stephen here, but to have him here to have a really great conversation with him. So it was a fantastic, lighthearted conversation, but it was super informative about the game, about the origins behind it, and, and more importantly, I think, how he aimed to not only achieve his goals mm. when creating the game, but how he successfully achieved them as well, which I think is brilliant. And along the way, we shared some like really heartfelt stories that this game has produced around the world. So um, I can't wait for you to share this all with everyone. And super psyched we had the opportunity to do it. And I'm just going to let this flow into our conversation with Mr. Stephen Medway. Enjoy. Well, look, I think... Um well, look. Let's let's look. Let's start at the beginning. Before we even start at this, before we start even start with Clock Tower, let's talk just games in particular. I guess you want to just talk games. Let's do that. What sort of games do you actually like? Like, obviously, you must yeah. like werewolf style games. But are there sort of like was there computer games that you played or video games that you played before you even got into this whole designing thing? I guess like yeah, I'm, I've always. I've, it's always love games. I haven't actually played that many werewolf style games. I, I played werewolf a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played resistance mm-hmm. once. Something else. There's not many people that say they played resistance once. Secret Hitler. Sort of yeah, I played Secret Hitler once. Right. So I've played three other social deduction games. Never played Avalon. Never played. I, I don't think I've played anything else. Mm-hmm. Um. So when I when I was when I was making Clock Tower, I I sort of based it off Werewolf because I liked I liked well, the things I liked about Werewolf, things I didn't. I just went, oh, what if I just remade Werewolf the way that I wanted to play it? But but growing up I was always all all D and D fantasy role playing games. Oh, nice. There used to be a, I don't I don't know if you ever played it a series called like uh, they were called the Gold Box. Gold Box D and D. No, which no. version is that? First like, and second edition. Yeah. Wow. It, the computer games from the late eighties, early to mid nineties, they were brilliant. The are the if, only if I, if I put half as much attention into school <laughs> as, I, as I put into Dungeons and Dragons Gold Box yeah, yeah. digital games, I'd probably have a university degree by now <laughs> <laughs> instead of dropping out and becoming a game designer. So. Oh, well, look, I've, I've I played some mud like some mud text things back in the yeah. day. They were some of the the old ones, but um. Are they just like text-based games? Yeah, they were yeah. just kind of like text-based ones where, you know, your, your Hugo's House of Horrors and yeah, all that sort of ones. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I played a lot of NetHack. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is yeah. like yeah. greatest game ever made. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like the only person at the table who's yeah. never heard of that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, greatest, greatest game ever made. Oh, okay. There's, there's a lot of those games. Like, well, I guess what was it about the... I mean, you guys can also... Please don't let me ask all the questions. You guys yeah, jump no, in when you guys... But like, was there, you know... I mean, the timing with this game coming out along the things like Among Us and things, right? Now, granted, you yours was in development before Among this Us. This came out way before. I know it did, did, but yeah. do you, um, <laughs> like, have you played many, like, these kind of werewolf games on, like, in digital format at all? Or is it more like you just enjoyed the in-person thing, I guess? Yeah, I'm, I, 
in all instances would prefer in person than digital. Um, there's a reason that board games, the the reason that board games are a thing, and mm. people people play board games instead of digital games, is because it's people want that either either that they want a human connection, mm. or they want human human competition, which you don't for the many things that digital games give you. That is not that is that is not their strong suit. That's they're biased against that. Yeah. Uh, like well, definitely, like uh, people trash talking on Call of Duty. You don't get that in board games, really. <laughs> I, 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 I can't speak for your board game, Very right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but actually, that, that's actually a really good example. Mm. Like in person, trash talking has a certain vibe to it. Yeah, it's f- it's it's got barbs, but it's friendly. It is, yeah. It's for it's, f- but online it tends to be. It tends to be nasty. It tends to be more genuine. Um, it doesn't have to be, but board game board games are about people, mm. and I like to I like to play games with people because that's a it's a, it's a fun social experience as well as a fun definitely yeah it's like it's like a intellectual sport yeah I know so. Clock Tower has um, the fact that it sort of hit the market sort of it's been growing progressively uh and it's sort of transitioned to an online version as well with this fantastic app that um tpi have developed um i found i've, I've had quite a few games online i much prefer it in person i will say but the app is fantastic for those that haven't tried it highly recommend but there's no trash talking in it like it still feels like it's a social game you know so the essence of the game is still there so like you know i'm sure a lot of work went into that so props to you you guys were actually putting the time and dedication into that. Um, but why do you feel like that social connection has stayed even on a digital version of this game? How long, how long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a big topic. No. Um, oh, huge. Sorry, I can give you like, I can give you like the quick answer. Up to you. Up to, whatever I can t- you feel the, like. Mate. The rest of your podcast is this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I've like deep early shit. Well, well, look, <laughs> let, let's start with a quick answer and then yeah. let's dive yeah, in we'll from there. Cause I think, sure. um, I think there's a no, lot. That's fine. Um, the 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 quick answer is the game is de- the the game itself is designed as a social game mm. the the rules and the characters are designed not to be a game of suspicion and hunting n- hunting people down mm. but as a game about trust building and communication gotcha and yeah. so okay. yeah to play the game to play the game to play blood on the clock tower well you need to get others to trust you you need to communicate with others. You need to notice who's not communicating and find out why. Mm-hmm. Good communicators are, win more definitely at, at Blood on the Clock Tower. Um, bullies and bullies and bad communicators, um, or people who use negative social tools, they may win that one game through, or two games, or three games through intimidation. But then they'll find, oh, they get. Um, they uh, people don't want to play with them anymore, yep. or those times when they're drunk or poisoned or where they're wrong, they make a fool of themselves. I, I, so, good communication is key yeah. to Clock Tower's design, and mm-hmm. that does transfer online. That yeah. that is that is a sensational way of saying it. Because one thing I watched was it was it was it early last week or late the week before? There was a psychologist who basically reviewed the talk and i've i've already forgotten this this uh psychology student's name that basically was quote unquote the inventor of were- werewolf okay uh dimitri davidoff D- thank you very much I, I i got to meet him recently really yeah oh, that's cool yeah um I, the reason i had quote, quote unquote because i've also read things that says that maybe he really didn't invent maybe he based it on mafia or something like that but regardless i don't he, he, he invented mafia i the guy Mafia was a sorry Werewolf was a copy of Mafia. Yes, Dimitri. So who owns who? There we go. Yeah. Okay. So this this, this, this is a part. But anyway, this is about to be the Spider Man meme. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it, I, I will fight you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am not here fighting. I'm I'm just basically I'm, I'm just making it known that I am not as well informed That's as right. I would like to be. As the man so, who made a very well yeah oh, hey, <laughs> a social hey. That's right. But but anyway, the, the the point I'm making was that I watched I, I watched it was only part. Of it was more so sort of like an overview of this study where this with this researcher was saying that the uh, werewolf proved that the that basically the werewolf would win more often than not by by intimidation and so on and so forth because it was a realization into the human psyche because people people would 
typically respond to stronger personalities. Some like whether it be yeah. they, they would attract themselves to that and just listen, or whether it be because they would just would be intimidated and then listen. But the thing I, I the thing I found in Clock Tower and where I completely agree with you that tr- that is true is that you can be as intimidating as you like, but if you're drunk, if you're po- if, if if you're poisoned. The moment you realize you tried those tactics while you were drunk and poisoned, the very next game you play, you go, well, those tactics aren't going to work anymore. And I th- and that, and that because that forces you to change the way you play, it then means it changes the, the, the dynamic in the audience. So I love that. I, I love that explanation because I've never been able to understand. Uh, so if someone says, why do you like Blood and the Clock Tower over any other so- social deduction game. I will talk about mechanics. I will talk about the uh, the various characters and things like that. But I have to admit, that is one large element of it because I know with Werewolf, every time I've been the Werewolf, I can, I've can i got a gamut of things I can try and I would win as the Werewolf. Whereas in Clock Tower... He's bragging now. No, no, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I've told you guys where I got... I just I had a massive hissy fit playing Werewolf one time that everyone was always incriminating me. Everyone's like... And everyone felt sorry for me. So they just let me pass. I was a werewolf. I was 100% a hundred of werewolf that came. <laughs> so, um, but in Clock Tower, that, that isn't the case. And again, I, I, I've, I've just never thought of it that way. In the way, the way you said it, you said it was perfect in, in that it, it, it forces you to change the way you approach social deduction games because of um, the characters, because of the facilities within the game. It's fantastic. Yep. I've got to ask a question. You talk about werewolf and the rise with your online apps and things. Before you do, I just want to no, please, yeah, no, please do mention the other the answer. The other half. No, yeah, yeah please from do from before. Um, the other, the other reason. So I, can't, I can't remember your question, but I can remember. It's about answer. how it transitions socially, socially online. Yeah, you know, everyone's online. still very polite and lovely. And yeah. um, the other, I think the other reason, the other big reason that. Um, Blood on the Clock Tower Online is a more pleasant gaming experience. Is due. Uh, this is a huge shout out to Ed Gabriel, Ben Burns, and our uh, our volunteers and our moderators, and just fans of the game who've made made Discord servers, built communities. Mm. Instead of, I've done everything that I can to remove anonymous. Patterns of anonymous play, mm. where you just jump in, do you uh, jump jump into a game, yep. win, and then never talk to those people before. Ah, okay. Ne- yeah. Never t- talk to those people before or after, because mm-hmm. that structure encourages bad experiences. Definitely. Um, so a lot of a lot of the most games that are played online come out of a community, and you go back to a community afterwards. So I really want Clock Tower to be a tool. I, I want it to be not so much a game, but a social tool to mm. allow people to have fun with their friends. Definitely. And for allow pe- to allow people to make friends and come back and play again, as opposed to, that's why I don't like playing with randoms and I don't, yeah. want, I don't want to put in features that just pair you up with random people. That's, yeah. So like just a huge shout out for all the, all the organizers and the Organizers and moderators and creators of the online discords and communities that have that have supported the Clock Tower Online because yeah. it'd be it'd be a very different game without that. No, and that's, that's this actually yeah. you feed perfectly into the question I was about to ask by saying anonymous play, and I was about to ask about the conscious choice to make the storyteller an actual part of this game more so than, for example, a game of Werewolf where you would read from the script. Okay you know werewolf open your eyes and yeah. point at someone or the whole idea from that the storyteller actually makes conscious decisions as the game plays so if you want to mind talking about like well how did you come to that decision in regards to i could never see blown the clock tower being run by an app like every time that we've played the game i'm like the storyteller actually puts a little bit of their own personal flair on how they may want this game to go, whether or not they want it to be over fast if they determine that something's going on or that they're going to keep drawing it out by maybe turning someone, you know, doing those kind of things. So how did that come about? Was that through playtesting when you did that or was that just a you realised 
you needed, you know, the human element of having someone having to run this game. Because obviously that's probably one of the hurdles of getting people into this game is having someone run it for you. But then maybe at the same time, that's actually the positive because you can have someone really welcoming. Um, one of our friends, Liz, who ran our board game, for example, she's like, all the new players, I'm going to take you exactly through. So how did that come about for you, like, that choice of like the, with the storyteller in this game? Uh, I was the storyteller, and I I, mm. I, I wanted to have fun too. <laughs> that's, fair. that's a great answer. Me. No, no, <laughs> li- literally, that was the reason. Um, yeah. I was I was running the game, and probably running uh, I I don't know a, a dozen games a week, two dozen games a week maybe, um, and I wanted to have fun too. So the way that I have fun. I just I just made I just made the storyteller role the role that I wanted it to be yeah. without thinking about what other people wanted it to be. It was like, well, this is a game setup. I want to choose the game setup. Mm-hmm. So that that's why the game setup is always storyteller choice, yep. not not random. And I think that's genius. I, to I took honest. the random yeah. function off the app. I love that because I want the storyteller to make their own game. Cool. Yeah. Um, automating, automate, uh, taking decisions out of the storyteller's hands and automating them, yeah, it makes things quicker, but it's less fun for the storyteller. Absolutely. So I've never run a random game. I've always chosen my own characters because I look at the group and I think, okay, this is a new group. What will they find fun? Yeah. And so I get to make that decision. And when they when they have a good time, I get to feel good because I I my decisions did that. So I, I had that With, experience recently yeah. as well. Um, like we recently ran a game of Bad Moon Rising, and um, we ran the game and, you know, the final day came and everyone was actively chatting in the circle for like a good 10 minutes before I called noms and everything. And everyone was, I was happy to let the conversation flow at that point. The game finished and everyone cheered and everyone talked about the game. And an hour later in the car park, I saw a group of four people who'd never met each other before still talking about the game. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, that, I did a great job that they're doing that. And I've never yeah. seen any other game have that effect on people. Yeah, 50, yeah. 50% of the development time was sitting in the car. Oh yeah, with the um, with one of, one of the players would give me a, a lift home after Exiles, and we'd, yep. si- we'd sit in the car for like four, five, six hours just talking about what happened. That's amazing. Yeah, that's it's just it's, un- really? it's uncanny. What what, what yeah, about yeah. the storytellers though? Like you mentioned a couple of things, but what about the storyteller was fun? Like what like what was that? Obviously, you said you like to help direct players, but what was the fun that you were looking for with that kind of? part of the game because i guess what you've done is you've taken a part of the game that people didn't really think was a game and have turned it into its own little separate part of this thing that you get to so like what was fun for you about that i guess like you know when you did the storyteller or what was making not fun yeah. and you wanted to make fun i guess what was what was yeah what was not fun I, I never I don't I don't know if I've ever run a game of werewolf, but I was ter- I was terrified of running a game of werewolf because right. I was terrified of making a mistake. Right, uh, and, Cause, and you almost yeah. can't make a mistake in werewolf. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> you almost can't. I, I look at I look at I look at fifteen years ago, Steve, and I think, yeah, <laughs> uh, idiot. But um, I yeah. So I put in the the reason f- for the might for like recluse and spy. Yeah, you might. Is because I wanted the storyteller to be able to make a mistake. Nice. Yeah. It was like if you forget to do this, well, that's a might. You, you just forgot. It was. Yeah. A might. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. so good. I love that. <laughs> I've leaned on that. So that yeah. night at the church where uh, we I've, for, I've, where, where we played, yeah. I had someone pull me aside, say, "Weren't you supposed to wake me up?" And I I I pulled out the card and it says, "Might." That wasn't intentional. Yeah. I forgot yeah. to wake up. I also them love up. how like you don't have to wake up the drunk. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like it was just it was there was a lot to keep track of. Yeah, drunk. You, you do have to wake up. The drunk. Oh, you do have to wake yeah. up the drunk because it's like oh. a, anyway, rules clarification enough. number yeah. one. Yeah. We'll, we'll update that one. <laughs> no, that's good. No, that's great to but, hear because. But yeah, lots lots of things like that where I'm like, I wanted to give this like I wanted to have all sorts of leeway to make mistakes so I didn't that's feel good. this pressure. Yeah, and. And give myself choice because I didn't. I didn't want every game to be the same. I didn't want to feel like a computer just running the game for the players. Hmm. I wanted to feel like I had some impact on the game that I could help the evil team if the or I could help the good team. Yeah. I could pay attention. I 
it's really fun for me to pay attention to a group that is playing. Like I'll often, I'll often yeah. pull up a chair and just sit in the yep. circle. hundred yeah. percent. And I'm just, yeah. I'm just looking at people and I'm, yeah. oh, I'm just interested. And being the storyteller gave me an excuse to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, Cause uh, I'm like, I'm listening to what you're bluffing as hundred percent. Yeah. And even though it's a bit weird because I'm not a player, it's because I'm about to go back to my, to my game box and help you. Yeah. I, so I'll mm-hmm. say that just, yeah. just quickly, Ralph, I, I know, particularly with new players, being this like when, when I have been the storyteller, it's also a good opportunity just to go and talk to people who are new to the group, yeah, who and get them aren't involved, communicating. Yeah. And it's like I know what role they are. Mm. Um, as long as I'm not giving away too much, obviously, but just to say, hey, how's it going? Are you okay? And like, well, what are you thinking? At what the are you thinking? Yeah. And it's like, and more often than not, they just go, I don't know what to do. And that's fine. It's their very first game. It, you know, that's why I'm there. And it's like, sure, you know, maybe. You tried this, maybe ask these sort of questions, things like that, and I love that. I love that because there are other games, particularly more traditional board games or even Werewolf, where you can't. You just you have to sit there and you have to let the game go. Now, I appreciate Werewolf's twenty minutes, fine, but other board games where you're competing against these people, you can't. yeah, I've done that. I've given advice to people in a competitive game, and you're just yeah. like, why am I helping you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so look, that's absolutely true. I I personally love being a storyteller. Yeah, yeah it's part. it's great to hear you say that. Sorry, Ralph, no, I know right. you want to ask, but because I'm the only one of the three of us here who hasn't been the storyteller yet, and I've asked. I, no, sorry, not asked. I've, why, why am I talking to you? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to these you know what? <laughs> you know, no, but, but it's it's great to hear you say these things about trying to give leeway to the storyteller. Because that's one of the things that had made me nervous about being the storyteller yeah. the first time, which is there are all these roles, you've got to keep track of stuff. And I'm sitting here and like, I don't want to make a bad experience for all these people. But hearing you say that, well, actually, the reason why you did the storyteller the way that it's kind of is to give you those leeways makes me go, well, I mean, if if, this, if Stephen did it that way, just to make sure that surely I should just give it a crack and just like, or do a demon might. No, yeah, <laughs> they've made it you, great design. Work what, wash it, just sheet. put in bio yeah. on every character. The, yeah. the washerwoman, you might. <laughs> but I even love how like there's like you heard it. <laughs> Stephen said it. You heard it. But there's, do there's, it. there's fabled characters that the storyteller can embody, and it's just like the storyteller made a mistake. Like like you've made. Way avenues to kind of explain that to your players like that, that transparency a little bit as well which is really cool um i've got a question from uh, we've got a bit of a community group around clock tower i'm gonna do it yep. again where i'm gonna jump in jump in before the next question. no that's a lot um, it's on the same i way. also i also really enjoy generally speaking i love being the host of games mm. so, like i was uh i was always like the organizer of my local board game group or bringing games and running games uh, there's a game called last night on earth a zombie game i love to i love to play the zombie players and give the play give the human players uh, a very tense exciting thematic experience that's what mm-hmm. i get out of it definitely dungeons and dragons i lo- i prefer to run uh as opposed to play okay. and a lot a lot of people just like that host role um it they like to be the person that brings people together to to pick a venue to host and to either bring people into the hobby yeah. or to see other people have a, have a good time and be responsible for that. And so I wanted to like that's that's why there's no time limit for the day. Like all these little decisions in game yep. are because I want to give the host as much power as possible to be a good host. Yeah. As opposed to awesome. standardize the game. So like yeah. when do you call for nominations? Is it after 4 minutes or 8 minutes? It's when you look at the group and you think, now's a good time. Yeah. yeah. Now, now will be the time that the group will. It's it's not the day hasn't gone too long. Uh, there's it hasn't gone too short with time pressure. Um, so the, all these little decisions are f- made for the storyteller. So that so that you can have have fun being mm. a games. A sharer of games. I love how the rule book on storytelling is such like a a guideline rather than a hard set rule. Um, Every storyteller I've encountered is different, (laughs) which like not only like their flair, like their acting, if they're really into the theme, but just the way they run the games. Like would I wake everyone up and say so-and-so died? I actually give everyone, oh, you got five minutes to chat today. But it's not actually five minutes. I let it breathe. <laughs> I just like to give them an indication as to how long they have so they can prioritize their chats. Yeah. And obviously every player count is different as well. I tend to 
shorter days with bigger players because everyone likes to talk in a big circle if they want to reveal and things like that. So yeah, but yeah, every group is different. Yeah. Like yeah. I've I've, I've, had, I've seen a final day go for like forty five minutes. Really? Uh, we yeah we because wow. every like. Yeah. But All the ghosts, I, I've yeah. seen I've seen day I've I've had I've really sped up days in the mid game when I, if I see people mm. getting out their phones yeah yeah or 100%. getting bored I'm like okay cool you're I'm gonna speed the days up yeah for your benefit because I want you to be engaged as well you want everyone to enjoy but it. Yeah. if everyone's if every everyone's talking everyone's having fun mm. like it it's really up to you as the storyteller to to know your group and know what they like and to know what's fair as well like mm. yeah that's like, the you that's shouldn't give so much thing. time that it, that yeah that good just wins every I, I, th- I think 100%. as well the, the the other thing that i know i've done is again especially with newer groups in some of the simplest scripts is we knock out the days really quickly particularly if the groups aren't talking mm. and i'm running out of ideas and how to get people to interact the one thing i i have found that works whether everyone approves with it, uh, approves of it or not, but after a couple of days, after a couple of quick days, people just aren't talking. Yep. I'll, I'll typically announce. By the way, you've you now you've now got this many people left, which means you now have maybe two days left. I always announce, and it, and it's like oh, they go, oh okay now yeah. now now we're really on a clock. And I taught Batman Rising recently, and a lot of there's a lot of death. And yeah, there was like six people alive. I'm like, potentially this could be your last day. <laughs> if what you think right now is real. Yeah. <laughs> so and and that's typically when you find that people get it. But the the, the good thing about it, and and I'm so I'm certainly not not suggesting it. You know, it's great. The game ended quickly. It just means that people have now. Had a quick game. They've gone. They had a taste. Yeah, we had a taste. We know exactly how the rules go. Let, let's go again. And I've never had anyone leave the circle and say, "No, I think I'm good." Every single person has gone. No, let's reload. Let's let's go again. Can we just use the same script and go again? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I'm having a Goobicon. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. So yeah. yeah, I've never. I can't think of a single time. I, I've run dozens and dozens of games now, and I can't think of a single time where I've had people just leave the circle after having their first game and just go, yeah, this wasn't for me. Um, mm. Yeah, I think, Stephen, you've done a great job with the roles in Trouble Brewing, the first script in particular, because you're giving out roles where people have an incentive to talk straight yeah. away. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing. Like you get those quiet, introverted people and all of a sudden I'm holding on to something, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, props in general, but yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that. and it's it's also... Yeah, the character. Uh, all the, all, that's exactly correct. All the characters have an incentive to talk, but both, yep. both good and evil. Mm. And some of the good character, all like all of the evil characters, obviously have an incentive to lie or to, yep. to yep. not talk. But there are enough in each edition. There are enough good characters that have an incentive to lie or stay silent. That I, I never want. I never wanted players to feel compelled to talk. Like tell us, mm. tell us what you know, or it means you're evil. I wanted the, even the good players to always feel, oh, maybe this person isn't talking because they're the Raven Keeper. Yeah. Maybe they're yep. not talking because they're, because they're the saint and they, yeah, yeah, they're they're trying to die at night. Maybe they're not talking because of this. Yeah. So, the way to get people to talk is not not to force people to talk mm. and to take the to take the the fi- the anxiety or the fear of saying mm. the wrong thing mm. away, and so there's a lot lot of particularly with the characters I design in Clock Tower, I was really thinking about how do I encourage people to talk, but not demand that people talk. Mm. But it's kind of funny because, and Ralph, I'm going to jump in and ask my question now because I think it's a good segue. Mm. Um, you asked you. you you created a number of characters, and I'm going to pick out two in particular because they're two of my favorite characters, the Gossip and the Juggler, where these are characters, they're not only encouraged to talk, the Juggler has to talk day one. Yeah. But the best thing about the role is not the Juggler itself. The moment the circle knows there's potential, there's a Juggler in play, you've got everyone pretending to be the Juggler. Did you intentionally? Did you when you were designing these sort of roles where, where potentially people could look at the script and going, I'm going to claim to be that, and I'm just going to see what happens. I'm going to see what like, either like a slayer on first day. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what chaos ensues, or 
you know what, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to just mask what my role actually is. Did you design for that or was that something that kind of came out in testing and you rolled with it? Like, I, I, think, I, I, think, I think the question I'm asking was that when you design some of these characters, did you foresee that people would then claim to be those characters and try to basically or play that character to try and also either fool the circle or fool the evil people or or just add more enjoyment to the game like what 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 was your goal in designing those that that, that those type of roles that basically other people could claim to be as well yeah, it was all planned out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, I just love it. I think it's case no, closed. Mostly, mostly. Um, that's what I thought. <laughs> when I when I design, what I what I usually do is, I I design. This is, this is going to sound a bit dry. It's fine. Right. I design categories that interact in interesting ways. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, all right, evil is a category. Ev- evil is a category. Good is a category. Townsfolk, outsider, minions, yep. demons. These are categories. Um, Drunk, mad, information. All of these are all of these are categories. Uh, you may act. Act is a act is another category as well. Okay. And so what I want, what I was doing was designing categories that would interact in as many different ways as possible to allow the players to come up with their own strategies mm-hmm. so i can foresee you know if, you, if you're familiar with the idea of emergent gameplay mm-hmm. yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. not like the designers just make stuff and then go oh gee gameplay emerge wow yeah <laughs> oh, that, was, that was bro we didn't expect that <laughs> like you always have a an inkling of like oh it'll probably go in this direction and the players will even though it's like we've put the we've put these 10 building blocks mm-hmm. and to win you'll probably want to combine combine building block one two and eight Gotcha. And, and intermediate players will realize that, That's but then the yeah. players will surprise you and combine things in different ways. Yeah, I like so that. I always, I was always hoping that people would claim to be jugglers. I never expected like be- 1 billion juggler claims a day. But, but then, <laughs> but, 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 but I, then I, someone will know. Just never, but never, then I'll know 1, 2, and 8, but, but, so then I'll pretend to be 1, as, 2, and yeah, 8. As, as a storyteller, yeah. the first time I played a game it, yeah. with, with that, that had the juggler in it, it was the first time I went. I really need a. I really need a pen and paper. Yeah, you at the just moment. need to update one. You just. Yeah. I know. I know. But I it's just, just like yeah. Like I, I was running. I was running juggler for like what five six years, mm. and just it. I never had more than two juggler claims per day. The like, very. The very. <laughs> this the idea very that you have eight game, or ten. Yeah. The very first game of sex and violence that I ever played. Like, what the hell? I literally had everyone Every, in the circle. And I was like, this is my first game of S and V. And one person claimed to be the juggler that everyone did. And I go, yeah. well, I guess I'll just claim to be the juggler just because it's the common <laughs> thing, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, why yeah. not? The original, the original juggler had... Um, if you get if you get all five guesses correct, you can't be killed that night. Oh, that's cool. Um, because I wanted I I, didn't, I, w- I wanted people to claim mm-hmm. claim to be their real roles and not have everyone claim to be the juggler. Oh wow! But <laughs> um, I just couldn't fit it on the fit it on the thing. So. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, cause every like I think I read it somewhere. Um, like the wording you have to describe each role was very concise because it had to fit on that token as well. Yeah, uh, I think that's really cool. Like and. I've had so many players where they, they like their ability will read like once per game and then they do it first night and they're like, what do you mean I can't do it again? I'm like, it's like it says it there. Like everything is right in front of you. Um, Nee and I dived in the other day. We did an episode of, um, no, this is Nee here. We did an episode of Trouble Brewing where we went through every single character mm. and we realized how well things interconnected because you're like, okay, if this player can link up with that player, oh, they've got some solid knowledge there. Like that's, yeah. it, and it's really interesting to hear you talk about that from a design perspective yeah. as well. And incidentally, that's exactly why the mayor is a mite. Right. Yeah, that's because really cool. If the washerwoman learns mayor, yep. It's if the if if the mayor wasn't a mite mm. and washerwoman learns mayor, it's game over. Definitely, I've seen the mayor. unless unless you, unless you poison unless you poison a survives. Yeah. Uh, I've seen um, some storytellers. Just assuming bounce. there's a poisoner in the game to begin. Yeah, may, not, may not be yeah, exactly yeah. right. I've seen yeah. the storyteller. Um, I think it's a mistake, but every storyteller interprets this differently. Where they, it, like Final Four, the werewolf goes for the mayor, and it, uh, sorry, the imp goes for the mayor, and they, the storyteller bounces the kill. And then it's like, okay, well, you've confirmed the mayor, and everyone knows this from the other way, so you've told the winner 
like already like it wasn't too there was no doubt there like it's a for sure win um so like it's i love the doubt that this game spreads like the poisoner and and the drunk and things like that um i just want to say um we built quite a big community out in southwest sydney around your game um and we reached out for some questions from the group uh and i'd like to ask you a question of my friend mark if that's all right uh and it's all about the design of the characters so i know you're building and you're still releasing and revealing new characters as well so this isn't really about that but um do you have any game mechanics that you desperately wanted to add to blood on the clock tower but during the design and play testing you realize it needed to be cut for some absurd reason nope no no i got to, i got to do whatever i want That's <laughs> nice. i put every 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 everything in well, I, I, like, I guess i guess a, i guess a, a well then a, a secondary is by that was there a game mechanic that you found difficult to put into the game but you were like this has to be in there like mm. for maybe balancing reasons or just you're like oh this may not work was there anything that you found like ah, oh, this is great it could even be a role specific i guess but was there a role that you're like i want this in there but oh, it just yeah. could not it may be that it wasn't in there but more so like this is overpowered or this is underpowered for that maybe like yeah. or wasn't fun um yeah yes and no like i was exaggerating a little mm. in t- to answer your question the the <laughs> the pain and the pleasure of self publishing is you get you get to make you get to publish the game you get to design the game you want mm. you don't have to design a game to check marketing boxes yep or to be either simplified or dumbed down or just have a whole bunch of content excluded mm-hmm. okay. for for financial reasons or for marketability reasons. Yep. Very good re- very good marketability <laughs> reasons. <laughs> that that I found out after after running a business for a few years. I'm like I I'm glad I was ignorant at the time. Mm. But the but the yeah, I I I was able to put in everything that I wanted to put in. I just couldn't put it all in trouble brewing. So a right. lot when it, to answer your oh, question, yeah, it's, it's in it's in upcoming editions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like I really wanted this. I really wanted this character. Like for mm-hmm. example, little, uh, little monster. I just loved little I monster. I love the little monster. But it was made after I'd made the three, the first three editions, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to go back and tinker, but I want people to use it and play with it. So mm-hmm. let's just let's just release it. Yes. Yeah, so instead of trying to fit everything in, um. What I did was uh, because because um, I have the the machinery, so the business machinery to provide different avenues of game release. We started releasing stuff online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like you, you couldn't do that if you just sell to a, a publisher. Yep. So it's like let's let's release this new character and let's just release it really before it's a bit before it's ready. And if there's a problem, we can fix the wording later. Awesome. And yeah. that's that was a way to get really cool stuff out. The yep. one thing that I wasn't able to do, that I really wanted to do, was to have um, locations that you visit in the physical game. Ah, uh, okay. With the locations having special powers. Right. Like I just, I'd really love to have, um, like everyone visits the graveyard, and in the, and in the graveyard, the dead can vote freely. Or oh, everyone cool visits. Idea. I'm literally making this up. As, as well, here we go. Everyone visits the. He's hitting the genius level now. <laughs> <laughs> everyone visits the circus, and in in the circus, uh, <laughs> jugglers can juggle again. <laughs> yeah, you can act twice per night. Yeah, but the storyteller can just kill you. Oh. I literally just made that up at the end. It's, prob- it's probably yeah, a, interesting. Probably a bad idea. We're, trying, we're trying that out. Yeah. In the I, next would game. Love, <laughs> I would love. I would love to have these, that. Are but these it's just what? too much of a barrier for yeah. a new player. You can yeah. learn all these yeah. characters and all these rules, and in a social situation, mm. and you need to interact. It was. It was. And too, like I noticed in much. Trouble Brewing, you've only got the one demon, and and there's so many demons. I'm not too sure how many. Um, was that the reason just to keep it simpler for new players to jump in and play? Because yeah. they're familiar with the, yeah. the imp premise? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, new players, Trouble Brewing's designed so that if what you need to know about the game is as small as possible, yep. mm. if you're a good player, what you, what you really need to know is um, you need to know how your ability works, you need to know what your goal is, yep. and you need to know that 
you can ask the storyteller any questions or you can share who you yeah. are. Like yeah. there's no damsel in trouble brewing. Cause like no matter what character you get in trouble brewing, you can say to that might not be the best strategy, but it's not going to ruin the game. Yeah. You can say to the group, I'm this character. What should I do? Yeah. Right. I'm the recluse. And yeah. like you'll have some people go, yeah, great. And some people go, Oh no, you shouldn't have told. But really, if you're, if you're a new player, you get a good character. You need to know this is how your ability works. Mm. You can say whatever you want. There's, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, I love that. And you can ask yeah. a question of the storyteller. If if you hear those th- three things, you know those three things, yeah. you're fine. I love how you have like... You, you don't need to three. figure out which demon is in play yeah. and all yeah. this extra yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love but, the amount of work you put into inviting new players to it because that's what our podcast is about. It's mm-hmm. about showing people gateway board games and inviting everyone to come play and try games with us. Um, at the back of this sheet in particular here, the outsider and the setup sheet, you have like a learn to play and that it's like a script that you read out to newer players. Um, how long did it take to develop that? And is that something that you would still to this day read out to Absolutely. a group of complete newbies? I, I read it every time. Every time. I, 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 I ad lib it. Yep. I, I don't literally read it, mm-hmm. but my at the beginning of each game with new players, yep. uh, I will give a five, it's a five minute rules explanation mm-hmm. almost to the dot. Yep. Wow. And it's basically, it's it's as identical to, to, that, that, to that sheet as possible. Yep. yep. And... Yeah, if we do a convention, um, like we just uh, we just <laughs> last year we went to, I got to go to Bombay, uh, Mumbai. Yep. I just found out Mumbai is the same city as Bombay. Yeah. yeah. Like we're in India. <laughs> we're in India. I'm like, yeah. After we're done with Mumbai, I, I wouldn't mind going to Bombay. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> and they're like white oh, people oh, no. <laughs> yeah they're like <laughs> this is why he went into game design oh, he doesn't no, have to not in not, not in smile <laughs> it's like yeah. you got locations in clock tower no. uh, but yeah like um, it's it's one it's one of my rules yep. that every, every storyteller at a convention yep. has to read that has to read or ad lib mm-hmm. because keeps it to five minutes you don't you don't have these hour long rules explanations mm. and the players learn this is the theme of the game Yep. gets them interested. It some people with a great yeah. Some people like this. Is, this theme's not for me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Not a problem. Mm. Starts off with the theme of the game, the goal of the game, mm. everything you need to know, and you'll pick the rest up as you play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love. I, I do love. That's that's all you need. Like every your first game, unless yeah. unless you're like a polymath. Yeah. yeah. Like you you play board games all the time, and you have a math you know a mathematics PhD. Everyone's first game. Every game's. I just played Twilight Imperium. Uh, <laughs> nice. that's my my first, my first game. I spent the whole ga- whole game learning how to play. Yeah, so yeah. you're going to yeah. be learning in your first game anyway. And that's a long first game so, to be learning your first yeah. game in <laughs> Twilight. So, so I, I do it every time. Yeah, because I don't want to overload my players. Yeah, I want my players to feel comfortable, mm. and they can figure out the rest of themselves. They do, yeah, they don't need to know outside account. No, they, they figure that out they during don't need the game. The, they don't need um, to read the wiki. They. Yeah, they, they don't need to know strategy. Just giving them this: say, so here's a piece of paper, yeah. and here's everyone that could be in the game. Don't worry about yeah. it at the moment, but just know that you yeah. will have that information if, yeah. if you need it. Yeah, yeah. So and then, and then I, as, I recommend I recommend everyone do that for new yeah, players. I, yeah, I didn't initially, and I, I realized it was a rocky teach, um, and, and rocky, very rocky first couple of games teaching new groups. But then I definitely jumped to um, reading that, and I love how. It, to me, I don't do it as quick as five minutes. To be honest, it's more of a ten-minute teach and read because a lot of people ask questions during it, and I like to keep it a bit loose. But uh, I love how it ties back to go. These are the four things that you need to know, and that's like everyone's just like, oh yeah, it's just four things. Like I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I just think it's fantastic, and I do it um, every time there's a new group of players. Yeah. So, yeah. Say whatever you want. No peeking. You can ask a question. Don't yeah. be a dick. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't <laughs> yeah. be a dick. Yeah. 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 Well, I think as well, like, that's a very, like, don't be a dick, right? It it very is. I a, love the die with dick. Look, uh, look, well. I do like, say I as well, like, that's very an Australian yeah. is. Like, I feel like that's a very Australian. Oh, that's not written down. <laughs> no, no, but, no, but like, I know, but like, an Australian. no, 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 but like, I feel like I could. I, you know I, how there's I, like Bogan Monopoly, there's Bogan Clock yeah, Tower. Know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you no, but like, I feel like I read, like, the I Australian feel like, rules explanation. All right, use cunts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm the fucking Undertaker. <laughs> I'm the drunk. Oh, I'm an Aussie. Like, no, we're all the drunk. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but, 
again, I, I do, I do want to say that I really do truly like uh, Ralph said it right. So we, the reason we started out the podcast is because yeah. we wanted to get people into this game, and so every, like every game, not just like, not yes, just like, like every game, but yeah. this game specifically, Werewolf do- and those kind of secret Hitler games do have that problem of, as you, we mentioned at the start, like you either very accusatory of everyone. Like, you're the, you know, we had a game of Secret Hitler where it literally devolved into us yelling, you fucker at each other for a good 30 minutes, right? No one could <laughs> understand what was going on. But this game specifically, we played it. Um, I have a game day here for my family and friends every year. And we played three games of it starting at nine o'clock in the evening. And we we were playing games from 9 a.m. in the morning. So we'd done 12 hours of gaming before we even got to, to, uh, to, clock, to, tower, yeah, to yeah. clock Tower, to TV. And I had... Four of my friends who I just, they, they, we're all kind of talkative, but they were all like, oh, I don't know, I'm giving me things. And then I think Damien ran or Ralph ran the first uh, game. He ran the first, I ran yeah, the next You ran two. the first yeah, one. Yeah, and yeah. all of a sudden, everyone was having a great time. It led to these situations where everyone was like, oh, and laughing and having these really welcoming times. I mean, oh, granted, in, the, that, in that there first game, issues, weren't in that there? first yeah, game, that you game, did yeah. pick the wife. You, I you gave the wife of the no. of the imp a special role. It was, it was a random draw. It, it was, was a it was a random draw, and um, it was basically it was a husband and wife. Yeah, but was, basically, yeah. husband and wife. Where the, the wife got the the wife the wife got the opportunity to basically um, she found out two characters and whether one of them was 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 a minion and the 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 the, the, the um town townsfolk the investigator no that's the one that yeah. That doesn't matter. I didn't know that I had given her her husband as one of the minions. I didn't know they were partners. So she's immediately walked up to him, stared him straight in the face and go, are you evil? And she's like, ah, him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, and the game, and unfortunately the game devolved from there, but that's not the fault of the game. No, no. The, 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 that's just, that's just a funny no, but that's story. That's a funny story, that's, that's that's came a funny story that came out of the game and went, well, Maybe I should have asked a couple of questions before I set up the game, so it's fine. You know, it's okay. But yeah, cool. but the, the, hmm. that's that. That is one thing that I, I mean, I I love that in all sort of social deduction games, but especially Clock Tower. Um, but what I want to know, like, I, I, I want to go back to the three sort the of editions. the three the three three editions. I was going to call it called chapters. How did you draw the line? And say so. You've you've mentioned troubles brewing and what its purpose is. It just a case of this is now slightly more advanced stuff, and this is the more advanced stuff. And like, was that the delineation, or was was there more thinking that went into the thr- well? First of all, did you always want to have three editions um, within the game, or a- a- and if so, what was the delineation between those three? Like, what what was um, what was the thinking behind it? Um, look at all this. For the first look week at, or two, I was struggling to even get one <laughs> edition. Right. And after Trouble Brewing was popular, I mm-hmm. had, I just had more ideas, and I thought exactly as you said, yep. I'll aim, I'll aim for three. Okay. Um. And then I'll aim for five. <laughs> and then, and then I'll aim for seven. Yeah, right. And then I'll aim to have a company that. Mm. is financially successful <laughs> so that I can get one out. <laughs> yeah. And for that, um, I need to have at least 11. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we go from there. <laughs> yeah. I, I always wanted to have three. Right. Um, like I was, when I, when I started, I had like eight characters, but I, I was just really struggling for ideas for the first. And then the floodgates opened and it just kept, they just kept coming. Wow. But I wanted to have three um, mostly because that, the idea of beginner, intermediate, advanced, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be honest, I only had three ideas at that point. Um, Bad Moon Rising has its own feel, mm-hmm. yes. and Sex and Violence has its own feel. And I didn't, I just didn't have more ideas. And now I've got more ideas, so it just keeps growing. So you said you only had eight characters. How many characters did you eventually get to before you went? We're going to have to start culling because otherwise this is not going to be financially viable. Like I, I've, I've got a feeling because you've mentioned the business a few times, so I'm, 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say there is a point where you went, yeah, we, we, we can't support all of these. So <laughs> the how box high, isn't big enough. It's yeah. already a big box. What do we do? How high did, how high did you get? How, like, how, how, how many characters were there before you went, all right, we're going to have to start chopping? Or, or rather, we're going to have to start, maybe not necessarily chopping, but we're going to have to start putting these as like a, Version a 2.0, future, 2. Idea, future yeah. release, that sort of thing. A boozling or these other editions that are coming out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff. There wasn't really, there wasn't really a limit just due to numbers. Okay. It was more due to, uh, due to how difficult the character was. Okay. Like for, for Kickstarter, like there were so many characters, for example, that I wanted to release. And to be honest, like the first three editions, the reason they're the first three, they were just the first three that were finished. Okay. Oh, okay, that's fair. Like, that's fair. The yeah. next three editions are yeah, have been half you know halfway done since forever. I'm like, well, hmm. I could wait until I've, wait until I have seven and then pick the best, or I could just release the first three. So the reason you've got these three is because they were just the first, the the first well, three that, that I thought. I, I think they're fantastic but, editions because it's really grown, hasn't it? Yeah, like and it's it, really taken. I actually really like that it continues to grow too. Yeah, like. It's like uh, a living I, card game or something. Yeah, like I'll, I'll come up. Game. Yeah, I'll come yeah. up with a new character probably once a fortnight. It just pops into my head. I'm like, oh, Sick. Fuck, I'll write that down. And do you think this must exist? Yeah. Do you but, think you'll ever get to a point where you're like, I'm done. I'm not gonna do this anymore. Like create new content for this game. Probably not. Yeah. Um, because it's hard to turn that off, isn't it? Like that creative mindset. That's you... yeah. That's what that's what greatest show on earth is for. Like. We, I may do Greatest Show on Earth one, two, three, four. Mm. I really don't know, mm. but there's a lot of a lot of fans have a lot of fans have character ideas that are good ideas that yep. I can't include because I'm like mm. ah, I have I already have ah. that idea in a slightly different way. Yeah, but every so often I come up I come across a fan idea and it's like I never thought of All that. Right, people stop making custom content, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Really, the the barrier isn't the barrier isn't number because mm -hmm. if if like if there's a market for it, yeah, like I'll release I'll release I'll release expansion scripts till like, yeah forever. That sounds fantastic to me. Um, <laughs> but I'm what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to com compromise on quality. That's, like mm. if one of my rules for character, like I've got a list of rules for character design. Every character, yep. every every edition must have its own feel. Because mm -hmm. if it doesn't, if it's great. just trouble brewing with different characters, like why? Yeah, just release. I'll just yeah, release yeah. the characters well, separately. But yeah, I, okay. I only know these three editions. You're right; they all have a completely different feel. I've played with a lot of the experimentals that you've released with the Kickstarter and some of the online content as well, and it's wild, <laughs> you know. And they definitely have a different vibe. Just the fact that you include a different type of demon now just changes the entire way the script yeah. is played. Yeah. Like it's insane. Yeah. And demons are actually the the character type that I've got the most of. Right. Like, sorry, like the most, like ideas for, or? uh, the, the yeah, the, the most, the most ideas for a demon. So it's, it's, uh, you know, you know, balanced by, sorry, there are not more three town, there are not more than three times the number of townsfolk than demons <laughs> waiting right. in the midst. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you know okay. what I mean. Yeah. Um, but so, and, and the demons really, really changed the game. Like this, yeah. we got some yeah. wacky stuff. Yeah. Like. If I keep mentioning one of my volunteers, Lachlan McCubbin, he comes up with some zany, like every idea. <laughs> he's never approached me with an idea that works. <laughs> <laughs> but he still tries. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> but he, like, but his, his, his ideas are so unique that I'm like, let's make it work. So mm. that's, that's one of my criteria. Every single character mm. has to be unique. Yeah. And it, like, I don't, and I don't just, don't just mean u unique with text. I mean, the thing that it does yeah yeah it you know, has to be a totally unique idea which is why high priestess when that came out i went mm -hmm. that's that's pretty wacky i've never heard that before can you remind me what that one does again uh, so townsfolk yep. every every night the storyteller tell the storyteller tells you which player the storyteller thinks you should talk to the most yeah that's sick yeah so it could be someone with a secret Mm. It could be someone who's got powerful information. You have to figure it out. Yeah, that's great. And I've never encountered that before. And when that character was suggested, I went, that, that's in. Yeah, because we so, naturally do that as well. So that's, that's really the TV limit. as well. And yeah. That's yeah. really good. Well, yeah. I think is that, like, that's a, the perfect thing that we talked about before, which is why having the storyteller be a human 
allows for such these especially for tv yeah yeah like yeah well not even just for tv the fact that you couldn't have a high priestess if you didn't have a human storyteller you couldn't the, yeah. The, yeah. and that's the thing you're right like the the storyteller it's who like i don't know who do i want who do i want you to talk to tonight you know maybe actually you know you should actually go talk to ralph he's been mm, yeah. he's got something that i think I, you could try and get from him the yeah. word should it's open to interpretation <laughs> yeah. it could mean it'll be the best content I'm yeah, so, yeah. Look, we're, we're all streaming. I want you to go talk to the funny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I didn't put, I didn't put the definition of should in the glossary. It's, it's up to you. That's awesome. No, I, so, I, I do. It's I all in the wording. That. Like, it's a big so, legal text. This whole thing, isn't it? It's yeah. Cool. <laughs> but yeah. That, that's why I um, That's why I actually made the amnesiac is because I wanted I to have that. a character that allowed the storyteller hmm. to like to have no limits on their creativity. You can do pretty much whatever you want with the amnesiac. Um, as long as the player has a good ch- has they got a chance to a figure bit it of out, a chance right? of figuring yeah. it out, or at least getting close. Even if you get close, like yeah, I, I really like storyteller. As a storyteller, I want I want to be creative in game, mm-hmm. and I want other people who are running the game to have fun. And you you have fun when you're being creative and doing something. Definitely, that, absolutely. That, that's, yeah. Do you know the Amnesiac? I don't think we've no. I haven't played a game with the Amnesiac yet, but I'm going to assume that. It has something to do with they don't know anything or they're yeah. given completely wrong information. They, or they like don't that. know their ability. I'm going to get the wording wrong here. Um, they don't know their ability uh, and they ask the storyteller one question a day and they just say hot or cold or something like that to try yeah. and figure it out. Uh, but, um, the storyteller yeah. makes their ability up. Yeah. Totally yeah. fresh every, oh. every game. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a replication of something else. It could just yeah, completely new. Well, yeah. count me excited to see <laughs> play that. Well, again, this is something that, you know, I'm sure you get you 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 see all the time, which is that freedom. And I guess t- talking to you now, Steve, it makes a lot more sense of that. Well, you were that you you are the original storyteller, and you didn't want to get bored, so you created roles that allowed you to not be bored. But what you've actually done, what you've actually done, is created a game that's fun for everyone involved. Because then the storyteller's like, sweet, I get to have some fun now, so I'm going to do the things that I think will make the most amount of fun for this group. Yeah. And I think, as Ralph would said, you've done such a great job with making this such, like having these scripts. I know that you said you have, you know, beginner, intermediate, and hard, but it truly is, like TV, to, you know, is truly that whole, I do think it's the perfect first step for anyone who wants to play a werewolf, quote-unquote, mafia-style game of... It, it has the perfect balance of deception, lying, uh, as Ralph would say, the deduction, because there's like, rather than being accusatory, there's a puzzle out there. And, and, if, a, and if I can yeah. figure out who is lying and who's not lying, we can actually figure this puzzle and, out. And yeah. if you're so evil, maybe, it's the strategy as to what you exactly do. Exactly right. So maybe I'm trying to throw a you know an edge piece out there when actually it should be a you know a middle piece, you know, using a puddle puzzle analogy there, but metaphor there. But that's, I think you should be... You know, totally you know, commended for that. Do you find that you, you've mentioned that you played other board games? Were there other board games that inspired any mechanics that you've played, or like when you were playing this, you went, "Why is that mechanic not in my game?" Or something. Is there anything like that that you found, or was it just a lot of like you'll be out walking one day and maybe you see, you know, maybe you saw a magpie and that, in, in, I don't know, you saw a recluse <laughs> you got, on the street, you got swooped, <laughs> swooped by a magpie, and maybe that inspired something or. Yeah, you know, where where did where did you did you find any of these mechanics coming from outside or inspiring outside sources for for your game? A lot of stuff just pops into my head. A lot of stuff starts as jokes. Like someone will say, "Oh, wouldn't it be funny if?" Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Because I got a yeah, that, yeah, that that would be funny. Yeah. Because the but the pixie had to have started like that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a funny story. I, I don't, there's a story. I don't know if it's funny. Oh. <laughs> there's a story behind the pixie. Uh, Amy, Amy, and myself were talking one night about how easy it is to create a character and how hard it is to create a good character. Mm. And I said, um, "Let's have I th- the next 15 minutes. Let's set a timer and let's just see how many." totally unique characters we can create just start typing and i created 80 Whoa. and i think amy created 60 and they're like they're all they're all trash yeah, like, yeah it's just like it's a poisoner that acts twice per night basically or it's yeah. it's it's the soldier that's safe from you know other from, from, from execution yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, from yeah. execution yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't work but it is a new character mm. and we just said okay cool let's just look through, look through the list and we looked through the whole list of what 140 characters and i went 
you've got a good idea there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it was it was just the beginning the, yeah. the beginning of this idea. That's and great. I went, all right, let, hundred of 140 characters, one of them was good. Let's make it. That's it. And nice. and Amy has a particular style of character that she likes. She tends to like more anime stuff, more cute stuff, mm. stuff that has personality with a twist. So yep. the pixie was designed uh, sort of as a thank you to Amy. Nice. Really nice. That's yeah. great. No, but, yeah, that's I, I, great. I truly meant that tongue, tongue in cheek, but that, that, I'm glad that yeah. story came out. That's but, really cool. But there was, there was also just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of mechanics in other board games that I just don't like mm-hmm. because they, and so I just did the opposite. So yeah. like a lot, a lot of, a lot of games I play, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy pretty much any game as long as I'm not forced to sit there knowing that I've already lost. Yes. Like, I, I, I yeah. don't mind losing. I just like... You play right, once I, period I was the about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, We've all been there. <laughs> prime example. We played, we played in China. The first game ever was in China, hmm. in Chinese, with regular players. I, I, I oh no! <laughs> I don't speak Chinese. Oh no! And, and like we're googling all the tokens. It's like we lost so bad. Wow! But it that wasn't. We doubled the game time, didn't? <laughs> yeah. But so, so with Clock Tower, for example, I said, okay, cool. I, I don't want anyone to know that they've lost until the game's over. So any character idea or any rule that came up that was like, okay, here's a here's a third faction, and you've actually lost, and you have to sit there mm-hmm. for half an hour while the other two factions fight it out. I just said, I don't want that. Mm. So the, uh, the, I think, I think the other thing I really love about the game is it's inclusivity. Yes. It is. I would love to talk about this guy. Yes. <laughs> um, so I'm going to prime Ralph's question about outsiders, but not just what they are. So like it's a, for anyone who's listening, who doesn't know, it's just the character that can come in and out of the game. All right. At its simplest. It, it's that but they're more than that there are outsiders that are geared towards people that may have a disability it's like do you, you mean, mean fable sorry yeah, oh sorry, sorry fa- fable, fable. Yeah, sorry so sorry the yes. characters that the storyteller yes. can embody or that's right yes in the game. yes yeah. what was the thinking around that was it was that was it was the goal to make this game as absolutely as accessible as possible and if so was accessibility uh f- um uh, was at the forefront. At the forefront, yeah. thank you, of your design principle. Probably, probably number one priority. Amazing. That is amazing. I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to sacrifice accessibility for fun. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the only priority, and I think that's, I think that's a mistake that other designers make. Is they, they make, th- and this this is going to sound mean, um, but they make things more accessible. And at the price of fun. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to sacrifice either. I wanted things, I wanted the game to be as much as I wanted every, I'm, I'm going to rephrase that. Sure. Um, accessibility in some abstract sense wasn't mm-hmm. a goal at all. What I noticed though, was that I, I didn't make, I just didn't, I didn't make this game with the idea that I'd sell it. I made this game because I wanted something fun to do. Yeah. Um, I wanted to meet up with people and play games. And there was often people who couldn't play. And we, so I wanted them to be able to play. So I made mechanics to include them. I didn't, I didn't have accessibility as a priority or anything yeah. of the sort. But you like built it in as you're yeah. But yeah, yeah. but you, you basically but you do make something accessible once you consider and everyone. It, yeah. The, the, and and then yeah. and then it, then it became a priority. Yeah. Like we were. Most of the game was made at uh, a an event called um, it's a, like a it's like Australian Burning Man. Okay. Yeah. Basically, yeah. like a hippie camping festival. When I was playing with people who were not gamers at all of all age groups and of all abilities. And there was one chap who was deaf, intellectually disabled and had cerebral palsy. Like what a, yeah. What a hand to be dealt. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. Um, he, and he had a carer there who was both a carer who he could sign with mm-hmm. and he wanted, he wanted to play. I'm like, how do we include this person in a complicated bluffing game mm. where communication is key 
and he can't talk. So what do we do? Um, so I made like revolutionary as a character because like, oh, his carer, uh, who's also, who was also his friend, he can play. So let's pair them up. But I, I didn't want them to be paired. It's like, oh, you're, you're both just the one character. Because I also, I tried doing something similar with uh, my girlfriend, Andy, has a uh, intellectually disabled uh, sister and she wanted to play. And I made mm. characters ex- especially for her yep. that were very simple. It didn't require bluffing. Yep. And she got them. She said, no, I don't, I want a real character. She didn't want to be pandered to. She mm-hmm. didn't want to go, oh, yeah. I've got, I've yeah. got, I've got the special needs character. Mm-hmm. No, no, I don't want that. I want a real character. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. That's a high bar. So the revolutionary allows people who couldn't otherwise play get it get a full character mm-hmm. and no mercy like you, they may be the demon so you may need to yeah. kill them yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um <laughs> that's amazing but the way it? the way that they all their questions are asked through the carer like um matthew this deaf guy he would sign to his carer mm-hmm. and his carer would sign back and that they would play together and they're always on the same team <laughs> that's really nice yeah. i just love reading the revolutionary right now yeah. which is I need your kid. The carer needs to sign to the guy, to, to your, the guy, and he needs to sign back. And the revolutionary literally says, at some point, one of them might register as evil. So you're watching, oh, these yeah, two, yeah. You're, you're watching them sign and going, hold up. Yeah, Is yeah. one of them lying to each other right now in the middle of us? Like, oh, no, we don't no. Un- they're, all, they're, all they're always the, the same, same team. Oh, they're, sorry. they're either evil or good, yeah. but like for the sake of other mechanics, ah, right, okay. you, you might get register. an evil ping yeah. or you might get a good but, ping. But still, yeah. like, like you, yeah. the yeah. fact that I could look at them and go... Are they talking about me behind my back? Inspiring, right now? Yeah. Like, yeah. Are, are they sharing? Are they sharing information? Or yeah. Because they're the both good is. players. <laughs> yeah. Or are they evil players conspiring? And yeah. again, no mercy. Like, yeah. yeah. You can kill. You, you, you turn up. You, you don't. You don't. You don't get a free pass. Mm. Uh, because you, you do not get a free pass in this game if you're uh, deaf, <laughs> un- unable to. Walk without assistance and have, and, and have cerebral palsy. Yeah, you, no uh, mercy. Yeah, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but but, yeah. but the flip side is, you're you're a full player in every respect. Yeah. And when you win, you win for real. When you lose, you lose yeah. for real. See, I and a lot of people just really appreciated that. I mm. I, I, yeah. I love that. And and in fear of sounding like I'm pandering, it's, I'm yeah. certainly not. Like I love this game. The other guys here not know it. There's nothing else we've ever played like it, really. No, like, no, no. But the the yeah. the, the, the my my, I suppose some of the basis behind my question, my, my, that that question is because we've played games and not just older games that are known to have accessibility issues. I'm talking about new games, new yeah. games that are expensive. Like I'm colorblind and there's still some boards I can't. That's see. my point. Yeah. We've played modern like war, games. War of Whispers, I struggle with. Yeah, it. where where you you've had to go. Is that my color? And yeah, I'm many going, times. And I'm some going, people are asking no, me, Ralph, not. can you see this? Yeah, and, and it's like, yeah. can you see it? He goes, no, I can't. And mm. These are modern board games, and all they have to do is change their color palette. Yeah, their palette, that's it. <laughs> You've had to completely change how people interact with each other. But Sorry, you have had to create a game that, um, that ensures that people can still interact with each other when they have their own limitations and i think that's brilliant i think that's yeah. amazing it's something i absolutely adore about this i've game. actually used the revolutionary fairly recently just to get a 10 year old kid playing um because like you're playing with adults uh, in, in our community everyone's like you know 30 or so um just to get them comfortable talking to complete strangers as well you pair them up with with their parent and they're, they're in the game you know <laughs> like it's just it, i've seen this work and it's amazing um just getting people out of their shell yeah, yeah. i also i always grab the opportunity to harp on this <laughs> but uh angel and buddhist i use well. the angel a lot. use angel mm-hmm. yes yeah angel angel's great because yeah. so that's at the top of my <laughs> yeah the big fear that i mentioned before um when people when people see this, yep. uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the two I reckon the two biggest barriers to board games, and this is like uh, mm-hmm. getting new players involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, the teach the rules teach, yep, I, is in, is always confusing, yep. Yep. always, yep. and the logistics around venue and players, yep, just getting people together. Speak in my language, Steve. Every Speak sing- in my language. Every mate. single person who sees this is initially going to be confused. And I had a point. I can't remember what it was. Oh, that's the <laughs> script, everyone, for those listening. Um, <laughs> um, oh, I thought we had you, vid- you, I thought we had We video. do have we video, do have but there is also audio, audio only audio as, as well. well. So, yeah. so yeah. Um, But if you do want to see it, go to our YouTube Angel, channel. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah, that's what I was going at mm. with Angel, is the fear is not 
oh, I'm not going to understand everything. The fear, because this is a social game, the yeah. fear is I'm going to say something stupid. Yeah. I'm going to reveal something that I shouldn't reveal. Yeah. And my whole team's going to roll their eyes and say, oh, you shouldn't have said that and I've lost the game. So trouble brewing in particular is designed so that so that, that never happens. As long as you don't say, I'm evil, I am the demon, these are my teammates. <laughs> but the angel <laughs> is designed to get rid of the fear of the fear of dying, yeah. the fear of saying the wrong thing and then dying. We we've so seen the op- they work. Yeah, we, definitely. They work. I, I really, they really love work. it. And, and they don't imbalance the, the game either. We have seen the counter to that. Uh, the very first game of this I ever ran, it was at a mini game day. Um there was 15 of us. It was the first time I ever story told. Um, and right at the death, Evil had the game in the bag. All the poison I had to do was just take the kill. Mm. But because the poisoner had got into a spac with the imp, he just turned around and he goes, no, nah. <laughs> he refused to vote for himself in the kill. Good team won. And it led to an argument. It was just out of spite. Yeah, I, I can't remember the, the game. Thing. I remember, I remember that. Um, yeah. But again, that, that that was people having a spark. And that, that was the only time I ever saw it happen that way. And then in the end, it was actually because mechanically the poisoner didn't realize how much of a strong position he was in just by taking the yeah, kill. Yeah, he fell on his sword. And it was yeah. like, oh, yeah. A lot yeah, of that's players it. don't realize that. Exactly, exactly realize right. That yeah. Exactly right. But the thing is, that guy, uh, so buddy of mine, Tom, he's, he was converted to the game after that. Like, he loved it. I oh, thought he had a miserable time. I'm happy with Tommy. Slayer shot me the imp on the very first yeah. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, anyway, still, still <laughs> but, bitter about that. Yeah, but <laughs> you should ban those players. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't played the game. With no, no, no. He he loves the game. He plays the game at every opportunity now. Um, Wasn't even a, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, can can I ask? So in saying like so about how the different players play. So you've you've travelled around now. Um, obviously, having the game has given you an opportunity to go and see how different people. Are you finding that there is like a universal language in the way that this game gets played in say different like in the UK to India to here, or are you finding that it's sometimes big in China as well and China? Yeah. Do you, do you find that there is this kind of universal language of your game going on at the moment, or do you find that you actually find some uniqueness in how games are approached, maybe depending on the the country that you're that you're in or where it's mm-hmm. being played? I guess. I think um, China's different than India, and both of them are different than everywhere else in the world. But Europe and Europe and Australia and America are roughly the same. Okay. I think Australia's a little more in it in it for the fun. Yep. Mm-hmm. More than the win. Mm. Whereas uh I think America's slightly in it there are very slight differences. In India's very very loud, very chaotic. <laughs> We've yeah. we've got a we've got a imagine. imagine if it goes to Italy or something. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we have a we have a mm. we have we have a we have one crazy one crazy storyteller in India that does everything and Love he, that, he yeah. run he he runs runs games in Hindi. Right. And uh phys, like it's very different particularly with physical physical barriers in yeah. India, like um oh you uh, I'm Gujarati. You're you're Gujarati. We're touching and we're hugging and I'm mm. like patting you on the back. And yeah. we met 30 seconds ago. Whereas in China, um, things are much more like a- analytical, yeah. standoffish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't say reserved, no. but I see where you sort of. I, mean, I see where you're going with that. I'm close with one Chinese lady, yeah. and um, yeah, she's very quiet and reserved. But um, she'll definitely. She's actually played this. She saw this box of clock tower, and she's like. I've seen my cousins play this. <laughs> That's yeah. what she said. <laughs> yeah. so, but it's um, there, there's an, there's enough of a common language that I, mm. I get to I get to go to these places and use Clock Tower as a way to meet people yeah, and nice. a, way, a way to have fun with people, mm-hmm. as opposed to something that is a barrier, mm-hmm. um, which something that's something that is so language dependent can often be. Mm-hmm. So I, I find it. Yeah, I find it. It's almost like a social lubricant or a communications lubricant or something. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a huge yeah. icebreaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. And which is which is great because like I, I I think I really need to go back to to Bombay this year. I think it's <laughs> to Mumbai. <laughs> to Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no <laughs> why why not do both? <laughs> <laughs> 
sounds good. Yeah, that's but, crazy. Yeah, like, <laughs> th- there's nothing. There's the thing I like to do most is to go somewhere new and yep. run and run some clock tower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's. I think it'd be too strong to say that it forms a language, but it certainly mm. forms a bridge between people of different languages. Uh, or, we or again, mm. we've seen that firsthand here. Yeah, it's like, amazing how it's grown. No, up. like like pe- group. different creeds, backgrounds, um, age groups, age groups. It's different, like the demographics, neurodiverse well, yeah. people. Yeah. Like we've and. They just they all get into a group and the game finishes and while they're waiting for the next game they go have a chat. Like and I was, it's I was seeing a, amazing. Like a butch guy in an NRL jersey talk to a like a nerdy kid with Aspergers and you're just yeah. like you wouldn't see those two people conversing. No. Like like no. typically speaking, you know, yeah. like um, yeah. So that was quite amazing. To you see. did mention that you travel and you can use an icebreaker. Does that mean that we're going to see a travel edition of Blood on the Clock Tower coming out anytime soon? <laughs> Small pocket size, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's even heavier, dude. Because <laughs> because you got to put everything in there. Exactly, that's true. Yes. Oh god, you're trying well, to, some of those I, little reminder tokens are already small enough. I can't yeah. imagine smaller ones. I, I only have so much carry on, Steve. What are you doing to me, mate? Uh. Um. So I will ask another question from Mark as well because this is my favorite question. Um. How often are you struck by the profound realization that blood on the clock tower? has likely permanently altered the tra- trajectory of tens of thousands of lives, if not more. How often? Yeah, like how often he just struck at how much of an effect this game has had on people and just changing their lives. Doesn't think about it at all. So. <laughs> and then I'll follow it this up is, with, he also yeah. asked, when's Blood on the Clock Tower 2 coming out? <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with something that sounds something that is negative, but sounds negative, and I'll and then I'll get to the okay to answer. Um, ever since probably twelve months before Kickstarter, I've mm-hmm. spent the majority of my time sitting sitting in front of a computer, looking at looking at numbers or looking at rule books and editing and disconnected from the players of the game. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've even stopped running the game. Um, disconnected from the players of the game in, in the broad sense, disconnected from my players, uh, from other storytellers and from those people who have those stories mm. due to the needs of getting the game out there produced right? yeah and a lot of the information a lot of the information that presented itself that was presented to me was quite negative like it was it was sometimes legitimate sometimes not legitimate complaints uh personal complaints or th- the game was late the game was quite late and there were a lot of a lot, a lot of very upset or very disappointed people yeah um and dealing with artists and graphic designers and I, I, don't know, I didn't know how to run a business. And I had to figure all that out. And that mm. was a very, very focused just mm. on a computer. And lockdown intensified everything. Absolutely. For me, I didn't even notice. I didn't notice lockdown. Wow. Yeah. Um, the local gelato parlor uh, had shorter lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a positive. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, yeah, kidding. 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sort of that those, those habits of being just just focused on just focused on the computer screen have mm. I'm just now beginning to break. Yep. But whenever I go to uh, wherever whenever I go to a convention, mm-hmm. and whenever whenever I meet people in person, and some usually maybe nowadays about once per week, one of those really positive emails comes across where it's not so like if someone says i really like your game i give it a 10 out of 10 that's nice but i yeah it yeah it doesn't mean much yeah exactly but the kind of impact that you're talking about is reaching me more and more now oh that's great and it 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 means the world Mm. because it's usually um it's usually from someone saying this game has changed my life 
and here's how. Mm. Uh, I'm not praising you. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not talking about the game. I just wanted to share something that has meant meant a lot to me. Either they like I've, I've had, I've I've had videos of people who met through Clock Tower, and proposed. Wow. And, and said yes. <laughs> <laughs> in in a, I've had multiple videos of people who've proposed and married their partner that they met at Clock Tower during a Clock Tower game. That's amazing. I've have had people that have worn Clock Tower um, uh, badges and like a, a one couple that got married and one of them had was the drunk. I've had people from uh, health services call up and say, uh, "We use your game to help people with um, social anxiety." Mm. Or, or just just people who say, I, "I have a social group now. I'm having a blast." Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Our our crazy Indian um, <laughs> employee Briz initially got in contact saying, "Your your game basically saved my life." Wow, that's you great. Know, it, it got me it got me back into my religion. It got me back social, and and I, I gave him a call and said, "Hey, let's let's talk." I ended up giving him a job. So it happens re- not to sound to up myself but it happens pretty regularly now that's and great. It, that's why that's why i keep going with clock tower i hope you say like the 100 it's because it does it does mean a lot to yeah. a lot of a lot of people mm-hmm. I, I i've had one one person who said um i'm not going to mention this person's name sure. but who said um I've I've been turning up to, I've been turning up to Clock Tower every week for eight you know eighteen months two years now and no one else knows this but I'm I'm dying from a uh, from like, like from a, a terminal from illness, an incur yeah. from an incurable disease and again I'm not going to say which because I want to protect yeah. identities but yeah. uh, every week I turn up and I get to, I get to socialize and I get to have a good time and thank you so much mm. and I didn't know that. Mm. And stories like this happen often, and it just absolutely means the world to me. Whenever it happens, yeah. as, as long as it's yeah. sincere, which it which it always is. That's fantastic to Thanks. hear, honestly, because like you've definitely had a positive impact on the world. Like you've put a lot of hard work and effort and nights at the computer, and even still building the business up, uh, the business side of it. But yeah, well done. <laughs> really, well, it's well. definitely changed my last couple of years and mm. I don't foresee stopping organizing these games as well because it created that positive impact in the community and that's just here <laughs> yeah well thank Absolutely. you thank you for sharing those stories though that's really cool to hear that 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 is happening I mean yeah I mean I guess did you ever have early on or at some point did you ever think that your game would have this kind of impact or did you was there a moment in your design process that you were like i i, I know you mentioned that this was you, you designed a game that you wanted to play but was there a game was there a time in that process where you went I, I i think i'm on something here i think this could have the impact or did that impact just kind of or sorry did the reach of your game exceed even your expectations of what you thought this game was going to be Right from the very beginning, that's what I wanted to do. Um, one of the one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast is because I have a, I have a question that I want to ask the three of you, and we'll oh, get to it. Absolutely, please, please right. do. Yeah. But it's it's about um, we'll get to it. But it's Sounds about yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about involving new people mm-hmm. and why you do that and how you do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, right from the very first time, the very first time that I ran Clock Tower was at uh, it was the night that I met my now business partner Evan. I just I turned board game house party or <laughs> yeah yeah this is going to be fun and it was a blast. But just before a, a couple of years before I made Clock Tower, I, I used to be a really heavy drinker um, mm-hmm. from sort of late teens to early thirties. That was what I did. Mm. I, I party. I had like twelve years of. 12 years of partying <laughs> uh, and you can you can join the dots on what I what what I mean yeah. what I mean by that mm-hmm. and I went cold turkey because it wasn't working for me anymore and I just got back into board games which was and I got nothing else to do so I'm going to do what I always loved as a kid which was get together with people to play board games it was my way of 
being social. Mm. So with Clock Tower, I literally set out to make a game that would bring people together socially. That would be a way for people to have fun without without alcohol. Or I'm not anti-alcohol. It's just mm. I didn't, no, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't drink, that, and I yeah. wanted that fun thing to do. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, so right from the very beginning, I wanted to I wanted to make exactly that game a game that br- brought people together that allowed people to form friendships um, over the, over the gaming table. And right from the very first game, that's exactly what it did. Mm. Um, and it's when I when I thank when I thank the fans, I'm not just I'm not just thanking I'm not just thanking them for their their dollars although much appreciated <laughs> um i wouldn't i wouldn't have had the enthusiasm to continue making a game for five years because it literally took five years to, mm-hmm. to make trouble brewing um i wouldn't have had the enthusiasm to keep coming back if friendships were not built around this game along the way so it it wasn't built in a vacuum it really was built due to the people who play as well so well that's well no that's uh, i i think that really shows through in the game i i really do i really do feel like even just playing trouble brewing there is so much to dissect so much to play like uh, that's the one that i've played the most granted i've played the least out of all three the other boys which one's your favorite edition out of the three just out of curiosity if you does one have a favorite child? No, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> to play, probably Sex and Violence. To run, I, I can't go past Trouble Brewing. I oh, re- really, I really love playing Sex and Violence. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be an A plus game, mm. or it can be a B, but Trouble Trouble Brewing every game's great. Yeah, yeah, I have like, a I can't fault like them to be honest or Trop T, but you can't make a bad combination as a storyteller. I, I, yeah, um, I, I haven't found. But them. Yeah. of my top ten games of all time, including customs, probably five or six of them are Bad Moon Rising. I That's ne- my favorite. I, ne- <laughs> I never want to play. I never want to play Bad Moon Rising. No? I never uh, vote for it. No one wants to play that because like, it's, it's got favorite, a slow guys. start. Yeah, but the the end game for Bad Moon Rising is it's, some of the best. Yeah, like, definitely. The, the ramp for Bad um, for, for Bad yeah. Bad Moon Rising yeah. is is yeah. insane. Yeah. It, it, especially if you have some weird like zombie combination where people are high fiving and they've lost their guard and they yeah. like their guards down, going, "Oh, it's gonna be that, it's gonna be that," and then all of a sudden they go, "We got two days left." It's gotta be a zombie. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> <The dread. laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you touched on like the friendships that were made during the development of the game and that's why what kept you going really um i've done the trek so we're in southwest sydney right now and i've done the trek to the shakespeare hotel quite a few times and to me from an outsider looking in i'm like okay they're very clicky like these people they know the game inside out because they were there for the last eight years playing it like in my mind right but they were so inviting to come in and play with them. And then I played one or two games and now I'm in this story that they're divulging. And it's just like, I felt comfortable going there on my own. You know, So like this game created that. Yeah. No other game does and that. And not, not only are you going there, they're coming down here. Yeah, a lot of them come down and, here too. And those communities are being created. So, you know, you, look, I, I, I really thank you for sharing your, you know, sharing the, the stuff that you said, like how you wanted to, you know, how you were trying to go yeah. through your 20s and you made something like that. But I really do think, as I said, it shows that you made this game, you you made this game to get people, and I may be preempting your question a little bit here that you kind of asked, which is you actually said something at the beginning of this, which I have said a lot on our podcast, which is the reason I got into board gaming and why I love coming back and doing games as much as a teach can be annoying is that, the shared experience that you get at the table, that whether or not that be cooperative, competitive, or just that laughed, that is your experience alone. Now, we can talk about it, but no one else was there. And I feel like this is giving me the same sort of vibes, which is this story that you just played for the past 40 minutes, that's your story. And no one else gets that. This mm. is just yours now you can tell people about it and we can reminisce on the funny stories and tell people but no one was truly there to share that with you and every time that i've played tv every single time 
it's a unique experience that can never be replicated. Yep. And that moment is the moment. The moment that my wife turns around and goes, I think you're the demon. I've got to kill you. I'm not the demon. And then they are so right. Those moments I can share with you. Yep. But, but I'll remember those moments for years to come. <laughs> and I really do think that on a, as a personal anecdote, I was the most skeptical of playing Blood on the Clock Tower from the start because I had played many games of Werewolf and been very burnt by it. I hated the fact that someone never got to play the game. Someone, you, you, like I'm, you're, still, I'm still talking if not, I'm dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're dead, go away. You're not allowed to play the game anymore. I hated that. And so they finally introduced me to Blood on the Clock Tower and it honestly surprised me at what I was actually playing. And... F- so I need to thank you specifically like for doing the work that made this, but also op- I'm sh- I'm sure that having listened to you now that you've opened up your probably your mind to ideas that you never thought from people around the world, and that is it really does feel like a community game. It feels like a game that is not just one man trying to put his ideas into the world, but saying how can I create an experience that involves. People that, well, that I don't know, but I'm about to know you. Yep. Yep. And that... That's it. Th- that is what I, like, I, yeah, that's why it's amazing to me. That's, that's exactly the thing. Yep. So... Uh, you had a question for us, yeah. Steve. No, sorry. I, I, I was going to ask... This is like, like the third time you've been about to say something. That's okay. No, no. no, 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 no. You've <laughs> mentioned... <laughs> it's, it's fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you have to get a vote. You get, you get one more comment. Okay, one more comment. <laughs> I think I said the thing for all of us. We should all yeah. get one more thing. So the, yeah. the question I have, it's a quick question, but it may be a lot longer answer. But I'm, I'm going to ask you to... I'm going to ask it anyway. We've spoken about our stories with the game. And you mentioned that you had, you know, your top 10 events, five or six of them were bad, bad moon rising. What is your top moment in the game as a player, not as a storyteller? What's your top moment in the game? That's a hard question for anyone to answer. As a player, as a not player. a storyteller. I want to hear the other one Because I, I appreciate as a, I appreciate this is your game and I, can only, I, I can't even fathom how many times you have run Clock Tower. But as a player, I'm, I'm guessing that probably seldom happens. And I'm also guessing you probably got a few good stories as well when it does happen. I've got three top moments, but it's difficult to explain because they were there, there was there was one where Evan and I were imp poisoner in in a teensyville game where everyone else was a new player and like mm. sounds like a recipe for mm. either a cakewalk or a dud yeah and these were the three i have never seen new players this good <laughs> 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 ever that. yeah they were br- like they were nice but they were brutal right, I, love I, that. I had i had this i had this i was the poisoner and like first day I can't remember what it was. First day I said, uh, oh, let me think for a tick. Was it, are you the washerwoman? Because no, are you the monk? I turned to the player, one of the new players next to me. Mm. And I was like, I'm, I'm the poisoner. I'm thinking I'm going to bluff a slayer because like, we'll just see where that goes. So I turned to my, na- turned to my neighbor and go, are you the monk by any chance? Because what I'm planning is, oh, if yeah. you're the monk, you should keep me alive the whole game yeah. so that I can use my ability when it's really needed. That was my plan. And he goes, I am the monk. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, I knew that. I knew that because I'm the washerwoman. So nice. I just I just changed yeah. on a dime. Yeah. And I have never been grilled so hard. <laughs> this, this new player was like, don't believe you. I'm like, well, well, I'm either the washerwoman or the spy because there's no other way that I'd know you're the monk. He's like, no, don't believe you. <laughs> and I was like, on the one hand, that's a, that's a really shitty way to play. But on the other hand, you are correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. But this, this, Evan and I fought <laughs> so hard. <laughs> like, we were like, yeah, we're showing the game to these new players. And then like, 
two minutes into the first day, we're like, all right, no. Um, we're, we are playing hardball. <laughs> we don't need to actually try to win this game. It came... To, it Like, it's hard to explain... Yeah. Yeah. The mood. It came down to the wire. Mm. I have never fought so hard for a victory. And it was a teen civil game with new players. Right. And when we won, when the storyteller announced that we won, both Evan and myself both jumped out of our chairs and ro- like roared. And it was a, not performative. You know how yeah, you yeah, sometimes... You get, yeah. you get emotional about it, yeah. Like we... we yeah. And we jumped up and down and we hugged him. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he was right the whole time. But, like, what a it, was ju- it, it was like um, it was like when you see soccer players, like professional, mm. professional yeah. soccer players score a goal. The thrill. I will never forget the thrill. And <laughs> it's not much of a story to tell because it's like, because it was all emotional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes it great. You have yeah, that emotional yeah. buy-in. Sometimes. Yeah. And I, I've had the opposite experience also with Evan in Badman Rising. There used to be a character in Badman Rising that turned a whole bunch of people evil. It was terrible. It didn't work. But um, this was in like when Badman Rising was a custom. And the whole... I was good. And the whole game, I had it figured out. I was that guy. You know? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're I, that guy. Yeah. I had it... I, I, I'd, I'd like to think I wasn't mean. But I was forthright. I was forthright in my opinions. The whole game... And we, the, the group, finally listened to me on the final day. Oh uh, yeah, been there. Yep. <laughs> and the storyteller said the game is over and evil has won. I'm like, no, what? No, that that is that's what what? <laughs> yeah. And I I remember being in like the fetal position on the rug at Exiles. Yeah. Like going how <laughs> how <laughs> how it was that, it was that moment of shock when yeah. words like you become irrational. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because. And I just kept, I kept saying over it, how, how? <laughs> how did that happen? Um, and I'm looking around the circle and Evan's at the end chair and he goes, I was the goon, Steve. And I went, oh, the fucking goon. <laughs> oh, no. Because I, like, I had the demon pegged. I had the minions pegged. There was no alternative except if Evan was lying because everyone else had to be telling the truth except yeah. Evan was good and he was the goon. And again, just that it was such a shocking and thrilling loss that this was in the early days that I went, okay, cool. That was so much fun. I I need to make Clock Tower a game that is fun to lose. Mm. Yes. So if there's any character that's, if it's fun for you to be that character, but it's not fun to lose against that character, it's out. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. I I love hearing that about, I love hearing those stories from you because it's like, this is your game. But it's like, you actually play the game, yeah, and you you get emotional and like the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. That, that's a, that's quite why I asked the question because I've spoken to other game designers and I said, "When was the last thing you actually played your game?" And they said, I "Play it all the time. I play test it all the time." I said, "No, no, no. Play your yeah. game. Actually I, I, I don't do play tests. I just yeah. I just play. Yeah, mm. and and they they find they 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 don't get time to because they have to play test because of, you know yeah. pu- publisher the publisher's requirements and they're trying to improve their game, but. Play the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually enjoy it. Right, so, right. Stephen, before we wrap, you had a couple of questions for a question for us. Yeah. Um, okay, my, my question for you guys is... I'm asking this for content, but I'm also asking this because I genuinely, I genuinely want to know. Please. Um, yours. One of the, the biggest issues that I've had living, living in... Loving games and being in Sydney... Mm-hmm is how to get how to get games events a, a regular gaming group mm-hmm. or a regular gaming event happening in Sydney mm-hmm. in a city that is there are very few places to game very very few venues that are set up to be game of yep. place, places to game yep yeah uh, either their stores um, if you want to play uh, I hope you like Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've had that experience. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll tell you the answer to this I've one. Yeah. There's, there's one or like places pop up every so often, but they tend to go out of business. Mm-hmm. And what I've found in is that compared to other cities in the world, uh, particularly Melbourne, it just seems to be more difficult mm. in Sydney to get, to get a regular gaming group happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, I was able to do that with Clock Tower at Exiles. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't been able to do that for other games. What's what kind of success are you having and yeah. what's what's the sort of secret to your success have you done anything different or have you just been persistent do you, do you mind if i take this yeah it's it's no. it's quite an achievement i'd love yeah. to know yeah no absolutely we'll, we'll keep how, some, how you got, we'll start with ralph but yeah. we'll give so, some context um, how yeah. you got here yeah so we're board game gateway this is yeah. a fairly recent initiative over, over the last couple of years that we've been doing this uh but prior to that we were doing macarthur board gamers which and is a, a south, still, still, yeah, still still going it's a south south west sydney gaming group uh but finding a venue is tough uh we've i personally made a connection at a local pub they gave us a room initially for free and then they realized we we're getting traction and they wanted a bit of a charge for it and that was fine we we did that um we'll just we did a big gaming event and i think the result of a discussion we had was we need to back ourselves um that pub where I normally run Clock Tower uh, is shut for a year for renovations and recently I've just hired a community hall and we're just going to keep this going. <laughs> for, for the So for the community group specifically, yeah. so MacArthur Board Gamers, so that's our group over here in Southwest Sydney. Mm. That was started by Damien Ralph and another one of our friends, Reese, who's just yeah. currently moved down to Canberra. Yeah. So they started it as an excuse similar to yourself. We just wanted to play games. Just yeah. to play games all, with people. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in the past awesome. 12 months, what we realized, so in 2023, we held about one uh, a game a month. And we've realized that that actually wasn't enough. And what we've realized, I think, collectively, we've um, this year, at the start of this year, we've now moved our gaming group to once a fortnight. And where we actually hold it, so we used to game at a local, at the pub, but we also used to game at a um, local game shop. And we ran into the same problem, which is... Well, yes, magic space, yeah. was space and magic the gathering and pre-release nights were great because we could be there late but it would mean we'd run out of tables because yeah. they'd have tables all the thing yeah and then we made the snap call one week i said i was down at the local catholic club down one of the clubs and i was in their bistro area and i was there until 8 30 and i realized that whole bistro area cleared out by about eight o'clock and I said to the boys, what do we think about actually holding it in a public area just in one of the clubs? And they were like, how loud is it? And I went, it there's has, a, there's it, a band, it, there's a band 60 meters away at nine o'clock, yeah. but actually it's kind of usable. What we found, what we did was we just went, everyone, this is what we have at the moment. We have no better alternatives. This is what we're going to do. Yep. And we're going to do this once every fortnight. And at our last gaming event, we had 15 people. The one before that, we had 28 people. And our, we brought on a couple other people um, to help run the event. Because what we found is to get people to your gaming group, you need to, one, have consistency. If you do it not consistent, people won't be able to prioritize board games. And, and that's what we're finding, it. which yeah. is that if you don't prioritize your games... Oh, John just invited me over to his house. Ah, whatever. It's a board game night. I won't go to it. But if I know there's a board game on next Friday night, I may, or a clock tower night for that matter, I may go. The second thing that we've realized is, and this is the hard thing, when you run a board game night, you're kind of not playing games a lot. You're actually the host because once you've got regulars, the regulars will run stuff for you. But until that point, which is unless you have consistency, you you will need to be playing the part of getting people in the game. Yeah. This, and that's the hard part of getting a group going because until you have a regular group who are willing to sit down and go, hey, Steve, how you going, mate? Oh, yeah, what are you playing? Don't care. I'm going to sit down and play a game with you. Until you get to that point, it we do have found that unlike, unlike Blood on the Clock Tower, which is very inviting, what are you going to do? Here, I'm going to play you a game and you're going to be part of it. And not just that, if you're late, there's the travelers. If you're late, in, yeah. it's... That's how we. So, my my advice, and Damien, you can speak to this as well because you started at uh, the group as well, which is you need consistency, but also just a nice venue. And by nice, you, there may be trade offs on sound, but we have found that actually, we actually say to people, come down early at about six o'clock and let's have dinner. Yeah. Let's just actually grab a bite to eat. 
we'll start eating, maybe get out a couple of light games, start playing with each other, and I get to know you. It's like, hey, Steve, I'd love to see you again. I saw you last week, mate. Oh, you know, what do you do? Yeah, right? Draw four. Draw four. <laughs> then we start playing a game of point salad or yeah. something like that. I, I think I, the other thing is like, like, knee is exactly right. The, the word there is um, you have to be like a host, and yeah. you have to be okay with that. Um, I like doing that. Going back to our st- st- storytelling thing, that's why I love being a storyteller. I love, hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than okay standing back. I'm often the guy that will bring two bags of board games, teach people and just stand there and watch them play. And I get asked, aren't you going to sit in? So I'd rather you guys play. Um, you have to be good with doing that. It's not always. In fact, there was even in our chat recently, I said, hey guys, you know, the last three events, I think I've played two games. I'd, I'd actually like to play a game next one. And that's it. So communication is the other one as well. Um, needs right like you need to get people who are confident eventually to then be able to bring their own games but the most important thing for me don't ever leave a person standing yeah. at the front door going oh, am I in the right place you see someone standing around grab yeah. them put them if in. they want to play a game don't want to play a game just yeah. put them like I say example so there's a member of the um, of our clock tower group who's a fantastic storyteller Avery um came to one of the MacArthur board gaming groups. I had no idea. He also enjoyed board games. It was great to see him there. Mm. Um, and he grabbed him and said, hey, we're going to play to crypto. Come over here. And that was it. And that was it. You know, and, then just went, and then he went and bought it. Yeah, he bought it. <laughs> threw, threw him into a game. He had a blast. Went and bought it. That's kind of our mantra. It's just that we make sure that everyone has got a seat at a table. If they don't have a seat and if we have to... If we see there's a game about to start, we go, hey, guys, can we steal someone so we can make, make numbers up to come play over here? And we It's a juggling act. It's yeah. a, it is a juggling act, but we make sure that everyone has a table to sit at and play a game. And I think that's one of the most important things. And then on the social media side, that's where the consistency comes in. We try and make it as inviting as possible. Venue side... That's tough. That's the nightmare the part. Venue, yeah, you're right. Sydney is... Sydney is horrifically Sydney's expensive. Sydney's tough for a lot of social and, things. <laughs> yeah. So this is what led to, uh, without... Obviously, people aren't listening to this podcast to listen to us so much, but we did just hold our own very own board game day where we were at the same club venue, but this time we hired a, a, a room upstairs that could seat uh, or fit 140 people, 150 people-ish around tables for a game day. And we decided to make it a ticketed event because... We wanted to give people a chance, and we ended up having about 125 people rock up to the game day, which was great. But what we found is we primarily had homeschool families. We had a lot of younger kids with their mums rock up, and we advertised it as a bit of a school holiday event as well. And to us, they were the more, if people are listening from other groups that we know, they were the more important, quote unquote, crowd that we needed to kind of be hosts for because we knew the board gamers. And they'd be fine. They go find a table. They'll get a game out. They'll yeah. start playing a game. Yeah. They weren't the ones we were worried about. We were worried about Steve, who's standing up by himself, and he wants to play a game, but he doesn't know anyone. So where does he go to play a game? So we were doing things like putting a call out, like, "Hey, we've got a game of Decrypto going. If you just want to learn a random game, Bernie's waving his hand over there. Shout out to my dad, Bernie, who listens to this podcast. He and he <laughs> loves your dad. He's, he he <laughs> loves he does and gives me a lot of feedback by the way all the time." But he's playing the crypto over there. Come on over. Or yeah. And so that's what we found. And, you know, I think we're also, we are, we've had people from Wollongong coming up to our events, which are we're really good. I think you're very lucky in your area because you have a very high density of people. So you'd probably be able to get a lot of people in a good area coming into where you are. We're also, but one thing I have noted about clock tower players and board gamers they will drive from the sticks to play games because they, I find that everyone who loves Clock Tower, anyone who loves board games, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, if you think I'm wrong, they want that personal connection. I, I've, I've done a, an hour and 45 minute drive just to play Eclipse. There you go. <laughs> wow. And then, I, and then I got my own coffee. So yeah. <laughs> Miss Steve. Before we go. And then 20 minutes into the first turn, you realize you fucked your whole night. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. a spot again. Be- yeah. before, before, we let, before we wrap this up, now Ralph has brought something that he wants to get your opinion on. I do. Yeah. Right. So um, you're right. The Kickstarter was late. What happened? So I had to build my own grim. That's right. Just to kick, because I really wanted to play the game. I saw the Shut Up, Sit Down video as well. It just got me excited. 
and um, like Gnomes Royal Rolls Bar came later, and that they really invited open the floodgates um, to it, and like that was amazing. Um, so I made my own grim, and I wanted to see what you thought of it. We're gonna do a <laughs> section, an impromptu yeah. section right now. We're gonna call it "Rate That Grim." Yeah. Uh, so he's gonna show you grim. We just want your honest yes. thoughts on what you think of it, <laughs> and whether or not you're gonna be sending your lawyers his way. Polite <laughs> mode on. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No. Not at all. No. You know how you know how you were talking about brutal. Let's be brutal. Yeah. Go on. Let's have a look. So, um, this is my grim. If you want to see this, this will probably not make the audio cut. But if you want to see it. Go to Board Game Gateway at BG Gateway on YouTube. You'll be able to see Ralph's Grim. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Well, some people might not want to see my Grim. Uh, sure, they do. So, all the tokens are lovely poker chips uh, with some felt from Spotlight. And this is my. That's, that's my first uh, three editions of Grimm's felt from Spotlight. Oh, really? There you, go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you must have got a sale because this, mate, it was just as ex- expensive as the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's, it's a four ninety five for a, per A4 sheet. Yeah, uh, two sheets. Yeah, it's it's crazy expensive. So when when people are like, <laughs> you should do a print and play. I'll back them on felt and print them out myself. I'm like, or you could save money and buy the real. Thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what I thought I did. I thought I was saving yeah. money by doing yeah, this. Yeah, that's just this is time consuming and expensive. Look, I enjoyed, look, but no, it's as a hobbyist, I enjoy you know. People but it's, enjoy it's totally and, unique. Yeah, it's totally unique. These are from Board Game Geek. Um, <laughs> uh, the, just the principal files um, But this whole box I spray painted my beloved Pandemic Legacy Season 1 So after I completed it Still one of my favourite games I uh, just repurposed the little tokens uh, As the little night order But I don't think I used the right felt Because uh, they just sort of fall down really easily um, And these are my Pandemic cards Nice Look at that Wow, I actually haven't looked at these things Well there's Probably oh, yeah, look, there you, go. there you go, the, yeah. pandemic, <laughs> the pandemic thing's still on the back there, there you go, there so you, you didn't, go. Go, didn't go double-sided, but that's alright. No, no, no one's got time for double-sidedness. <laughs> oh. uh, so there's little, there's little death tokens as well for the for the little carrot tokens there. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think of that? I think it is perfectly functional, <sighs> which is, my first three grimoires were built for function. Yeah. Um, and this is... <laughs> Bringing back terrible memories. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> so now I have to tell my wife I waste of money by buying the game. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is this is uh, Steve Grimoire two level quality. Oh really? So how many Grimoires so are there? Level two. I think I, I think I had five five design items. Oh wow! That's okay. okay, so two is respectable. I'll, I'll take that. You know, yeah. I mean, not passing, <laughs> but close. <laughs> this is fine. It's no. about a D. You know, it's, it's fine. Just, this is fine. Does it does it does the job? It's got everything you need. It's perfect. Yeah. So I only made it for TB because uh, obviously everyone was a new player at that time. Yeah. Um, and you've you've got your high walls because you don't want people to see in. Yeah. Know. Also, exactly. something little a little tidbit, not to give unwarranted advice, but oh, please, no, do. please do. When we would uh, for the first right up until Kickstarter, uh, these tiny little clips. Mm. I never ever had three clips. I had one clip here. So one clip at the bottom. One clip at the very bottom. Yep. One clip at the very top. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, he's editing your grim out. How special do you feel right now? <laughs> he's giving us tips. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it, like six years? from Six years from inception to Kickstarter. Yeah. I only ever had this as a clip setup. Oh, just the top and bottom. Just the top and bottom. I never once had any problems. Really? So we actually included the third clip uh, as a mistake. Oh. We were ordering stuff, and we got like the it's called an it's called an M, uh, a PPC or an MPC pre production yep. right. copy or yep yeah yep M production copy I don't yep yep the one and before you give the tick and you check all yeah, of the goods yeah. and stuff yeah there. And yep. We, yeah and we had three clips instead of two and I said well we we don't need three clips we only need the two and everyone's like I just put one in there in case in case people lose a clip because if people lose a clip they're not going to be able to. Yeah, play and now everyone thinks you need three clips you don't you just need two there you go I'm You're gonna, watching this. I'm gonna start writing two clips now yeah. <laughs> and I'm just hoping love that people are gonna and be like you... who's the weirdo with two clips yeah. you keep it all the way at the top all the way at the bottom and you won't have you won't have breakages due to bending oh. yeah because that was my concern this is, just the, this, the flexing, this, is right? so, this is solid as nice you'll never have any problems. see look now you know that those clips are in the wrong spot and one too many sir so you're gonna have to fix that on your actual that has next time. blown my mind it's like changed like yeah. you know what Don't, you see the, not the, only do you not need the third broken. clip mm. not only do you not need the third clip for years i had two clips and they were half the size of that 
Oh, yeah, so I've got the, the that's sort that's of like medium You're, over, like you're overcompensating is what it's he's like trying to say. Right? In many ways. <laughs> it's, it's like 50 times as strong as it needs to be. Really? But like if you want to be a real man, five clips. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh. but you don't want to let people know that you're trying too hard, so little tiny clips like this. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, look, Steve, yeah. thank you so much for coming all the way over here, mate, to talk with us. We know, look, you haven't done too many interviews, but we really do want to thank you for coming all the way out here, having a chat Good with solid. us. And oh, thank you. <laughs> look, mate, thank you so much for coming out. It, it really means a lot, not only to us, but not only just to come out here, but I think also to share some of those stories with us yeah. and some of your design philosophies. It I, means a lot. It really does mean a lot, but I also, it makes me excited to not only play more of it, but also to see what you come up with next. I think, you know, given how we've had a chat about your design philosophy tonight, I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited to see some of these weird and wacky ideas. I mean, anything you guys want to finish up? I'm just going to say we have to get you out here for a cocktail a night sometime. Yeah, I'll come That'd out. would be amazing. Be a yeah, ton of fun. And you said you had a friend down in Canberra too. We do. Um, yeah, so yeah. getting I need a gaming group in Canberra. So I, I think there's a Facebook cocktail yeah. group already is, as well. Yeah. We're going down to CanCon shortly as well. Um, so I'm hoping to jump in some cocktail games while I'm down there. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, well uh, Reese, if you're watching this, and look, you know, we've got a contact for you. But, uh, and yeah, he started great. our group here. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, but look, look, who knows? Maybe look if you're free, maybe we'll actually meet up and we'll actually play an actual board game as well with you as well. Do that. Uh, you, know, you know, you know the drill. Once it becomes a business, you, you spend all your time talking about board games. Yeah. Well, look, <laughs> look, I, look, if, look, if I if I if I have to be your excuse to get you to play some more games, mate, then I'll gladly take that hit. That's no problem. Hell yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Captain uh, Sonar. Captain Sonar. I love Captain oh, Sonar. I'm no, that no. That's, oh that's, gosh, no. Yes. I love Bye-bye. Captain Sonar. We're gonna talk about board games. Bye. See ya. <laughs> no, our last game. Our last game. It was his brother. It was his brother. I thought I thought that one was drunk.